Hello, Carla from Scrap and Create. So we are going to be constructing our base album. So this is an eight and a half by eight and a half album. So you're gonna cut two pieces of medium weight chipboard, eight and a half by eight and a half. And it's going to have a two and a half inch wide spine. So cut your um, piece eight and a half by two and a half. And this should just be basically a cutoff from here because this is 11 inches, eight and a half by 11. So this will just be a cutoff. So that makes it nice. You will get black card stock. A 65 or 85 pound black card stock is fine. And you will be joining them together. I have a quarter of an inch um, score tape down here. And we are just going to be <clears throat> joining these together as straight as we can. And once it's all lined up and it looks pretty straight, you just pull the score tape. So once you have your two pieces of cardstock put together, make sure you burnish that seam. And then I use a quilter's ruler and I like to draw a one inch guideline all the way down here. So when I'm applying my chipboard, I'm kind of keeping it straight. We are going to start with the spine. I use um, score tape. When you apply this, you're going to apply it centered with the the seam that you just made. So you just line it up with your bottom down here and then you center it here. I'm going to pull my score tape and then I'm going to just lay this right down. So once you get that on, make sure you burnish it real well. The back side too. Don't want any air bubbles. So now with your eight and a half, um, the, the front and back covers, the, the amount of space you need between the spine and these covers, and this is what um, professional bookmakers say, is whatever width of the chipboard you're using, it's three. So you're gonna, I glued, and here's my smooth side, I glued three of the this medium weight chipboards together, and that is the width of the space I need. So that, that's my spine spacer, it's just three of the chipboards put together. I'm going to put that down here, have my score tape, going to push this against this edge and then lay it down with my, I have my little guidelines here. So that's what I'm going to do like that. The other way I usually try to do it too is I outline my, where I need to put it because sometimes I don't trust myself. So I'll do that too. But either way, you just, once you line it up and it looks straight, then you just plop it down like that. So that's what I'm going to do. Pull my score tape and plop this down. Those of you that are afraid of using score tape, you can just pull this one side of the score tape, pull all the score tape and then on this edge, just put some, some tacky glue so you have some more time for wiggle room if you don't feel comfortable just to kind of ease it in there and then once it looks good then you can plop it down. So once you have your one inch border all the way around, you're just going to come in with your scissors or however you like to do it and then just trim those pieces off. So 
So once you have your one inch border all the way around, I just kind of go around it with my, this, this foam folder doesn't cut into the paper. I just kind of go around the edges. Everybody does their own way of doing this. And you just use the weight of the chipboard pushed down on the table. And the short sides. Just to start getting that paper train to go over. Now you need to miter the corners. So the way you measure the space between the, the chipboard and the cardstock, the same, whatever weight you're using of your cards of the chipboard, it's two times. That's going to give you the right amount of space. So I just draw my lines there all the way around. There's some fancy tools you can use, but this way, doesn't matter what weight of chipboard you're using, just two times the chipboard. And then you just cut those out. And now everybody does this part different too. I like to go around and add um, score tape on the edges of the chipboard and the edge of the cardstock. This is just quarter inch score tape down here. When I get to the seams, I push, where's my, I push the score tape into that seam, push it down, and then up over the, the edge of the board again. So push down, over, and up to that edge of the board again. Oops, this one got crooked. Probably don't need to do that. I just like to put the tape into that groove so same thing on this side push it down into the groove push it over and then up push it down into that groove and then up. So you can see the, hopefully you can see the, the score tape has been pushed down into those grooves. Like I said, probably not needed. And continue, oops, continue on to the sides.
And then I do the top. And here I stop at my lines that I drew when I was adding my spacer. So I know I'm going to stop it there. And then I'll start it back up here once I pass that, that space part. Probably not necessary. Start it back at that line. And then just go all the way around. If you see people wrapping their covers, everybody has their method, and you just do the one that makes sense for you. And a lot of it, for me, depends how does my album feel once it is completed. I don't like, I'm just one of those people that does not like floppy spines. I like my spines to be not not floppy okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold over the long pieces first so we're going to remove the score tape Okay, now I'm going to use the art glitter glue. I'm not an art glitter glue person um, just because it dries way too fast and I'm too, way too slow. But what I do use it for is when I make these albums, I like to use it so it's up against the chipboard and I fill in this blank space where there's no tape. So I put it be up against the chipboard and then I fill in this space I start in the middle push up and I want it to go into those grooves. So I'm gonna push it down into that groove on this side, go over, push it into the groove on this side. And then I'm going to push this out. And if there's any glue that comes out, just wipe it up. And then go ahead and burnish the edges of the chipboard so that glue is sticking to the cardstock and the chipboard. Beautiful. Good. And then you just do the same thing on the other side.
Okay, good. Now we have these bits that we need to turn in. So you come down and you can do it with your fingernail or your bone folder. You just need to push that down so that the lip goes over the edge of the chipboard on both sides. I got a little glue down here. That's turned in. And then I just check it before I pull it over to see if I need to do any trimming. And that looks good. And that looks good. So sometimes what you can do is you, you would trim, you, you folded it over here, and then you would just trim it up this way. So it'd be straight like this, but as long as it folds over and it doesn't give you a point, it is fine. Plus we're gonna be covering it with construction tape anyway, but still. Too much glue, but Same thing on this side. So pretty. I just love making these covers. Okay, so now we, what are we going to do? Are we going to add black construction tape or our hinge? We are going to be adding black construction tape. If you do not want to add black construction tape, you do not have to. The black construction tape is just there to protect the spine, even though there's no cracking in this spine. It looks, it looks very nice. And there's no cracking up in here. None. But as this gets used, there's more um, chance that this eventually will get cracked and you can get some tearing up at the edges up here too, just from wear and tear. So if you want to skip this part, you can just skip ahead to the hinge. What you're going to see when we do make the album, I don't know if you can see that here is the album. This is black construction tape all the way around here and on the spine. So this will never tear. This black construction tape, all that's the album is wrapped around, this will not tear. So I'm going to get my black construction tape and I'll be right back. So what I like to do is I like to draw lines. I like to draw these guidelines. And these are, this tape, this black construction tape that we have, it's one inch wide, so I like to put, this is like a third of an inch here. Um, I measure out a third of an inch from the edge of the chipboard to here. And just draw a line on both sides. And then I make a tick mark over the edge, and then I continue that line on the front side. So what, what I do is I like to start, get, make sure you're, you start with a nice clean edge. And of course I just tore it, 
just tore it. So go ahead and start with a clean edge. And I'll usually just put it somewhere down here. And I just line up the score tape, the score tape, the construction tape with my line. Put it into that groove, lift it, pull it tight over when you go over this cover and try to follow or at least semi follow that line that you drew. You just want something to guide you so you know you're going semi straight. This is all going to be, most of it's going to be covered up with designer paper anyway, but it's just to get it kind of straight as we're going. Lift it, pull it tight over that edge as you go over the album. You want that tight up here. And then continue following that line till you get to the other piece of tape that you started with. And then you just tear it. If you have any wrinkles, they come out real easy with this um, tape. Oh, I got a piece of something stuck underneath the tape there. Oh well, it won't be showing. So now you have your black construction tape on that spine. And it's going all the way around. And you're going to do the exact same thing on this side. So once you have your tape in, just go ahead and go over those seams again. So now you have your black construction tape on the spine. So the spine will never tear here. Now for the top part, I basically kind of do the same thing. I do my, my guideline all the way across, all the way down here, and all the way around. So I'm going to do that and come back. So when I apply my um, construction tape, some people will just eyeball it. I like, I like guidelines. So I just put my little guideline all the way around. It's like a third of an inch all the way around. And I'm going to start with the long pieces. So with the long pieces, you're just going to get the tape and just start it at the edge of the album and you just go all the way across following that guideline go into that groove into the groove get to the end and I'm going to use my little tool and cut it. So then what you want to do is you want to 
adhere this to the other side. So I'm just gonna push this down on that tape and then pull it down. So with, when you have these end bits here, you're just going to trim it to the edge of the chipboard right here. So I've got my scissors and trim that. So we're gonna do something different with the, the sides. So just trim. Trim that to the edge of the chipboard without cutting the chipboard, Carla. <laughs> okay, so that's those are done. And then I'm just gonna do the this long side the exact same way. So you have both of the construction tape on both ends and you've kind of cut it close right up to the edge of the chipboard there. So for these smaller sides, you're going to do it a little bit different. You're going to have about a half an inch overhang on the end here. And follow your guideline. Oops. Go over a half an inch. Out, pull it. Make sure this is straight there. Now, for this, you are not going to roll it over yet. So, you're going to lift it up, turn it so the sticky side is up, and you are going to have these little flaps like that. You are going to miter this. on my fingers. So you're going to miter that and you're going to miter this end too. So there's your flap. It's hard to get my hand out of the way and miter this one. So now you have your two ends mitered like that. You're going to pull the long side in. Pull that long side all the way down. So now it's like that. And see you have this bit that's you have this bit that you have not adhered down to the tape yet. I don't know if you can see that. See how we got that miter? I'm going to push this tape down over the edge of the chipboard right there, just like when we miter our album cover. Now, the problem with this one is it should be flush with the paper. It, it's going, it's, I mean, it's almost flush with the paper like this in this direction, but I'm going to just cut it just a little bit, just a itty bitty bit like that. So when I pull it over, it gives me a nice corner. So you can see it's a nice corner now. Same thing on this side. Where's my open edge? Open edge here. Open edge right there. Have not pushed it against the tape yet. You're going to push this to wrap that edge of the chipboard right there. Let's 
see if I pull that over, will it stick out just a little bit? So I'm just going to cut this so it's even going in a little bit more like that. Let me get my scissors. Let me show you what I mean. If I pull it over right now, this is going to stick out a little bit. So I'm going to go to the edge of my chipboard and just kind of miter it in a little bit. That wasn't very straight. But something like that. This seems like a pain in the butt, but it's actually, I'm making it harder than it looks. Just if you want to practice on some just chipboard to get those corners straight. And then once they're down, you just you can kind of smooth them out. And they, they will look nice. That one's a little pointy, but I'm going to smooth it out. And there's how it looks on the inside. So it looks pretty good. So that is a step you do not need to do. I just like to do that because I know once that black construction tape is on, and if you just find that cumbersome um, and don't want to do it, don't, don't do it but it will forever protect your albums. And once you do it, other, other people have easier ways to do it than me, I'm sure. I've tried everybody's way and this is the way that works for me. But you can look at other people and how they do it. Lots of people have videos on how they construct albums just with black construction tape. So there's our album, completely wrapped. It has our black construction tape all the way around. It looks beautiful. And now we need to add the hinge. So now we are on to making our hinge. This is basically what it's going to look like. We have three pocket pages that are eight inches, um, eight inch square. And our hinge is going to be seven and 15 sixteenths inches tall. That way our pocket pages, there's just a, they're easier to slide on. So it's just slightly less than eight inches, which is the size of our pocket page. And it's gonna be 10 inches wide. We are going to have a one and a half inch wing. This is going to be this line right here at one and a half inch right there. That is where we're going to have the bend in our album at the spine. Between the spine and the first hinge, we're gonna have a five eighths of an inch gusset. Then we're gonna have our three quarters of an inch tall hinges. We're gonna have another five eighths of an inch gusset, three quarters of an inch tall hinge number two, five eighths of an inch gusset, three quarters of an inch tall hinge number three, we have our last gusset, five eighths of an inch, and then we have our one and a half inch wing. If you add those numbers, one and a half, one and a half, plus one, two, three, four, five eighths of an inch gusset, that will give us, um, no, that will not count. If you add all these numbers together, all these numbers together, the three, the, the gussets and all the, uh, the size of our hinges, that will give you the 10 inch part there. So anyway, enough with that. Let's just, let's just score the darn thing. So you got your seven and 15 sixteenths tall by 10 inch long um, piece of paper. This is 65 pound cardstock. You don't want to use really heavy cardstock because you don't want these hinges to be too stiff. So we're going to start with our one and a half inch wing. One and a half inch wing. Then we're going to have a five eighths of an inch gusset. That is going to be five of these tick marks. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. 
If you're going to score there, that is giving you, that is two and one eighth. This is giving you your first gusset. Now we have three quarter of an inch high hinges. So we're going to start counting six, and that's three quarters, six of these tick marks is going to be three quarters of an inch. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's two and seven eighths. And we have another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is three and let's see, one eight, two eighths, three eighths, four is five eighths. Three and five eighths. So this is going to be hinge number one, these two pieces. Then we have our five eighths of an inch gusset. Count out five. One, two, three, four, five. That is four and one quarter. That is a gusset. Now we got our next hinge. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure I counted that right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's five inches right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's five and three quarters. So this is, these two are giving you hinge number two. Now you have your five eighths of an inch gusset. One, two, three, four, five. So you're at one eight, two eighths, three eighths again. Let's see. You were at six and three eighths. That's our gusset. Then our last hinge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and one eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and seven eighths. Oh, I'm off. No, am I off? Let me see. Number three. And then I have a five eighths of an inch gusset. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, perfect. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Woo! So that's gusset, our last gusset. And then eight and a half to ten, that is our one and a half inch wing. Here's our one and a half inch wing. Whew. So that is our hinge. So we're, we're going our hinge, our hinge scoring. So you got the bumpy side and the smooth side. So we are going to fold. Here's hinge number one. These two um, these two make our hinge, so we're going to fold that up, fold and burnish it. And then I'm just going to hold on that and push down. There is hinge number one. Then we go to hinge number two. These two. So we're going to fold right in the middle, fold and burnish hinge number two. Have our gusset now we have hinge number three these two just fold that right in the middle burnish that guy and push down and now we have our three hinges so next thing before we we adhere them together I want to hold them Fold them over, fold them over on those score lines there, and just kind of burnish down those score lines there. Fold it over on this side, burnish it there too, and do that for each hinge. 
hold it, fold it down, burnish, fold it, fold it over, burnish. You want these hinges to move freely, so we're trying to get the paper to work so they'll start moving freely. Get that hinge, fold it over, burnish down, fold it over to the other side, and burnish that down. And now we're going to attach our hinges to each other. So this is the back side of our hinge. We've got these valleys in here. We're going to add score tape. So open up your valleys. You can see your valleys. One, two, three. I'm going to um, add, um, where's my tape? of an inch tape. So I'm going to put, remember this is a three quarter of an inch hinge. I'm going to add three eighths of an inch tape on this flap. Let's see. So here's hinge, hinge, hinge. So at the bottom of this hinge down here, I'm going to add score tape right here. If I can see the line, it's hard for me to even see because it's black. So we need to put some tape on the top of this. This also, because we want it to completely close. So I'm just going to get a quarter of an inch tape and put it on top there. So I have my quarter of an inch tape. And whatever tape, I, can, I cannot see. I cannot see. So I'm going to put my head down so I can see, and I'll be right back. Those of you that know how to join hinges, disregard any of this. I filled in the space of this side of the hinge, and then when we pull the tape, we're just gonna seam them together like that. So no big deal. Same thing with this one. Now, if you want, because maybe your tapes are going to overlap or you don't have enough room, put one of them down on one side of the hinge and the other on the other side, as long as you have coverage. So when you put these two together, you're going to have coverage here with this this one. So that's an easy way to do it. You put a piece of score tape on this end, then you get a piece of score tape on this this end. So you put them together, they you got complete coverage this way too. It doesn't really matter. Now, those of you that use glue, um, you can tell me whether or not you think so or not, but when I've used glue, glue just makes these hinges even stiffer. Yes, glue is stronger than tape, and when the, the fibers bond together, it just becomes really stiff. And I know there's no glue in the moving part. It just seems like it makes everything stiff and harder to move. Maybe that's just me because I am not a glue person. So I'm going to go ahead and remove Remove the tape. So voila, hinge is now together. Pull this one. Pull it hinge together. Bam, hinge. Last hinge.
last hinge, bam. So now they're all pulled together. And then just burnish them. So now you have the back side. Should be nice and smooth. Just go ahead and burnish it all the way down. So these score lines are flat as you can get them. There. And then I just go and move my hinges a lot because I want them to move freely in my book. So I go over them several times and just kind of massage them so they will move freely in the album. So there, so there is our hinge system. So let's get our book back in. So these little score marks where we have our first gusset, let's make a pencil mark so you can see it better here. And so I can see it better too. That's our gusset. Those gussets should line up with the edge of the chipboard of our spine right there. So it's gonna be like that. And then you line your hinge system up top to bottom, um, make them at even top to bottom. So it should be like a half, a quarter of an inch on the top and a quarter of an inch on the bottom, a little less but get it straight. So I'm going to mark it and then make sure it is straight with my ruler. And that will be my guideline of where I'm going to be applying my hinge. So now your hinge, I've applied wall to wall tape. <laughs> now, some people just eyeball it and drop it down and hope that it lands straight. I'm a ruler person. I drew my line up here where uh, it's straight. I drew my midline here and here. My hinge is my midline here. These lines are where the spine will be. So I think once I get it like here, I know that is pretty straight. All my lines are lining up. I put a piece of tape in the middle, right under hinge number three. That is the first one I'm going to put down. And I am such a weenie. I'm also going to be adding a little bit of glue. Not art glitter glue because I am way too slow. Just in case I need some wiggle room. It's just going to be this, this first section as I get it down. So I'm, I'm relaxed. I don't have to worry. I'm lining it up. I'm looking at all my lines. Excuse me, I'm going to turn it off while I get my head way down and make sure it's all lined up. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with the way it is, and I was able to reposition it as much as I wanted. And while I was waiting for the glue to dry, because I did want the glue to dry, I erased all my marks that I had on the hinge. So now that you have that centerpiece down and it's adhered, it's not going to go anywhere. You lift up the side flap, go under there and pull the next piece of score tape next to that centerpiece. And you put that down. So now that 
that side is down. When you get to the score tape that's going to be going over your um, spine where it bends, you... So with this one, this one's going to be going over the spine. I'm going to kind of ease it into that fold line right there. So as I pull my tape, I want it to ease it into that fold line. And then you're, now you're just pulling the last of your score tape. And now you're just pull, pulling the last of your score tape. If I don't tear it. So this side is down. And then you just do the same thing on the other side. Reach in. Oh, it looks like I missed a piece. Ooh. Reach in. No, that's it. That's it. Pull that score tape. This is the one that's going to be going over the spine piece. So I'm going to kind of use my finger to kind of get it in there and kind of get it into that groove. And then you just pull the re remaining score tapes. And burnish down. And then I'll have some more erasing to do up here. But the hinge is in. just want this to be really burnished well. This is what's holding your pocket pages in and depending on how heavy they are you want this real secure. So go with my bone folder here. Just be careful when you're going in these creases. If you have a sharp bone folder you will you will tear the paper. This is in, and now we have our album with our three hinges in place. And usually I just go over these again and again, just to kind of loosen them, them up before I ever put on my pocket pages. Much easier to loosen, loosen them up now than to um, get your pocket pages on. So you do however you, you do it. I kind of go through the score lines here and just help loosen up those fibers a little bit. So that's it for making the basic album. And the next I'll just show you quickly how to make the base pages, which is real easy. So we have three pocket pages. You're going to cut six pieces, eight and a half by eight, 
and you're going to put it in the scoreboard, oops, like this, the eight and a half inch side up, and then you're going to score it at eight. That's piece one, eight and a half up, score it at eight. Then you fold and burnish these. I like to use 80, 85 pound cardstock for my base pages. I just think it gives it more, just makes it feel stronger, just feels good. Just add your, here's my three quarters of an inch, my three eighths of an inch tape to the fold lines, the half inch fold lines. Then you just join them together. Uh, one fold, one piece of score tape on one side, one on the other, you line them up. Pull the tape. And once you have the first side on, easy to do the other side. Pull the tape. Push this over and push this over so you don't get any bowing. And then pull the tape. So there you have your pocket pages. So they're gonna go in like this. And let's see if these hinges will let them on fairly easy. Come on, come on, hinge. Yeah, so there it goes. And the good thing about having a three quarter of an inch um, hinge, you're gonna pull it up so you got a quarter of an inch showing, so you get more flexibility this way. And I just add it, I'll be adding a half an inch tape and that will, on the top, and that will tell me where I need to stop when I pull my paper back. That will be my, my guideline when I put those in. So yeah, these fit, so we're ready to go.